I really find that that saying is interesting. I had a conversation actually about this because it's like seeing, uh, when people say that to other people and, and I hear it, I'm like, well, what's wrong if she wants to be somebody or she exactly. wants to be somebody? Oh my God. Why is that a bad thing? You know, yeah, it's say, not, it, say it to not, those, say it louder to those in the back. <laughs> yeah. no, you know, when like someone will be like, oh yeah, he walked in and you know, he, if I, for example, if I know if this guy absolutely hates, you know, his auntie or whoever it is, because she's, you know, she's been a horrible person or whatever, you know, whatever the case may be. And he's walked in confidently and he's gone to meet all the people that he genuinely loves and cares about, and whatever. And then, you know, he goes and sits down and then people are like, oh, he's fear met, didn't even go and say hi. And I'm like, well, he's taking his ground because actually, you know, she, that woman's probably mistreated his, you know, his mom and dad. They don't know the history. And I, I genuinely don't think that there's anything wrong with that. So yeah. Particularly if they're trying to do something, it's like, oh yeah, he's trying to be a pilot. She's trying to do this, this, that. Fear me, and I'm like, <laughs> am I the only one to get anything wrong? Why is it a bad thing? It's not bad to want to elevate yourself. Exactly, it's, it's, it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I wanna I wanna talk about that right now because that's something that's common, and I'm I'm just interested to hear that that portion of your life, and uh, especially for any, everybody that's listening. So can you talk about? Uh, your journey, uh, you know, what inspired you, by the way, uh, to be a lawyer? Uh, I, I do want to hear that as well. So what's, what inspired to be a lawyer, uh, the, the, the process, the journey, the work, and, you know, and all the experiences, of not only on the outside world, but also culturally that you, that you, that you heard. Um, yeah. And then the, what, what you had to persevere through to, to make it and be, uh, be a lawyer. So, yeah, you can talk about that. Yeah. So I... When I was at school, I was I naturally gravitated towards mooting and debating, and mm -hmm. I found that that was really interesting. And I think that that again comes from just my upbringing and being able to speak and be critical and analytical in the family. And this is outside of my parents, but even with my auntie, um, my dad's oldest full-blooded sister, she Susan um, was probably one of you know she's one of the closest aunties to me. Um, on my dad's side and sadly she's passed but she actually studied law um, herself mm -hmm. and so growing up she would always have conversations with me about what was going on in the world and uh, you know back then especially when I was like nine or eight years old um, I didn't find it really that strange or odd until now that I look back at it, I'm like, wow, that, like, we spoke about some pretty deep stuff when I was a kid. Um, and she kind of naturally just honed that ability for us to just speak honestly and openly and critically. And we we actually differed a lot in how, what, how we um, viewed things. Mm -hmm. And what was beautiful was that we both had the respect for each other. And I mean, again, she has the respect for me as someone who's super young, but particularly as my dad's older sister. Um, mm -hmm for me to actually have that opinion. So yeah, I just, having that kind of relationship in, in my family, um, I naturally felt like I always wanted to learn two sides of every story, especially because I hated hearing one side of thing and then that person's completely trashed, has no ability to speak for themselves. And yeah. it used to really bother me because I'm like, well, we've only heard one side of the story. I don't care how close we are. If it's yeah. only one thread of the story, it's incomplete. And we can't yeah. draw a conclusion from something that's incomplete. Yeah. And so I was naturally really interested in, in, in getting as much knowledge as I possibly could. I was a, a typical nerd, to be fair, when I was at school. Um, <laughs> so I constantly was like studying, learning, and yeah, got into mooting and debating super young when I was a kid. And then my older brother, actually, he started studying law as well in Australia. And um, he and I love to debate. <laughs> That's kind of our thing. We love to debate. And like, again, that was something that I didn't even realize was honing me as well. He was far more progressive than I was um, with his views on not just uh, the culture and, 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 and our family, but even with women and men and, and the way that um, relationships were kind of built in, in, in Tonga. He was way more progressive and at the time I was too young to kind of understand because I was so ingrained in particular notions that I thought to be true. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I started growing up and realizing, well, actually, I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with this aspect. I don't give a damn who says it. I don't, I just do not agree. And so 
after that, I um, got super interested in, in, in criminal, the criminal justice system when I was at school. And we, I went on a Europe trip, actually. Um, and I was really fortunate to have gone to the Auschwitz um, concentration camp. Okay. Okay. And so while I was there, um, you just, you actually can't feel like help, but feel completely heartbroken about the concentration camp that um, had taken place. Yeah. But it really influenced my ability to see how so much injustice can go on in the world and actually be justified if you've got the wrong leader in charge. So it, for example, you know, back in the, you know, the, back in World War II, um, when Germany was under the influence of Hitler, when you think about it, a lot of the things, and this is an argument that was actually taken in court, a lot of the things that the people were doing, the Germans were doing to the Jewish people at the time was legal. <laughs> And that's, that's why it's so important to have an opinion and to actually be analytical because you can be told the complete wrong thing to do and it would be illegal for you not to do the opposite, you know, to do the opposite thing. Um, anyways, that, going to that camp really changed my life a lot. Um, and after that, we had career days at school. Um, naturally, when all went to the, um, the, the law booth and spoke to... Um, we had lecturers come in and, um, you know, different tutors and law students at the time got to, you get to speak to. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of from that, didn't know that I wanted to be a lawyer so much, but I knew that I wanted to learn about the, um, the legal system. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very competitive just generally, but in New Zealand, there's like over a thousand kids who make it into first year. And then that gets cut to 200, was it 300 students in the second year? So you have to maintain a specific, um, you know, a particular GPA to make it to yeah. the next year. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just thought challenge accepted. I'm going to do it. And <laughs> yeah. it, luckily for me, it worked out and I really enjoyed learning about the law and um, it challenging my own belief systems and I guess honing my ability to actually articulate what I had to say clearer. Like hmm. when I had an argument to say, I could say it much more clearer. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, pretty much in law school, I went through it. It was really difficult. Like it's not an easy thing to do. It wasn't all like rainbow, rainbows and sh sunshine. Yeah, I did law. Now I'm a lawyer. That's not how it is at all. Like <laughs> the movies. Like, yeah, <laughs> not, not more like that. You know? <laughs> but it's not um, but it's you know my mom was sick throughout my penultimate year and this is something that actually probably drew me a lot closer to the culture um because I realized that there were a lot of kids who were less fortunate than me at school at university um going through similar circumstances and were still able to thrive and do well and you know have a smile on their face joke around and all that kind of stuff and that that actually gave me a lot of hope that, you know, I could do it. You know, if I can, if they can do it, then I can do it. Mm -hmm. um, and the genuine support that I received as well. And so, yeah, dealing with my mom's illness throughout my penultimate year of law school, that was really difficult for me. Not, not for any other reason than we felt helpless to her pain. And that was something that broke all of our hearts. Um, but, you know, like the saying goes, the, the, the way that you can show respect and love to the people that you love most is to do well for yourself. Yeah. And so I couldn't use my mom's illness as an excuse as to not to do well. Like I was even encouraged um, to take a break, a semester break. And I thought, well, that's stupid. Why would I do that? Because then my mom's going to feel like her illness has impacted my ability to study. And I, I'm just not going to let it have that effect on me I'm gonna if anything it's gonna influence like it's gonna make me want to finish it faster so she can definitely be at my graduation which is what I did um and yeah pretty much after that I graduated and then I knew after I um, had six months of just traveling when I came back I wanted to do my master's um in international law and that I wanted to get experience in litigation and that's kind of how I guess my legal career started.